No, the, the, the title is not clickbait. It's honestly how I feel. I honestly feel like I failed my <laughs> sky in uh, 2022 and 2021 for that matter, as far as content creating goes. And I've let myself down. Come on, Sky, come up here. Come up here. Good girl. Okay, do you wanna do you wanna show your butt to the world? That's fine. I um uh, <laughs> this is Sky by the way. I have failed myself. I've failed the community and those who spend time engaging on the content. I haven't represented any of us well and I obviously want that to change in 2023. So Firstly, I want to establish why I felt I failed in 2022, uh, even 2021. Maybe some of you can relate and feel the same way. And what my rules of engagement are going forward. This is not like 2023, new me. No, 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 no. This is just me, except now just at this time, and it's the 6th of January 2023 now, that I have not done myself well. Blah, bad wording. But I, on my annual leave, I had a look at my stats of what I actually produced last year, and that was kind of the kick in the ass, if you will. So let's have a look at what I actually, um, and I got my computer down here because uh, this is just very kind of, I'm not scripted or anything like that. It's just how I feel. So last year, I produced 12 YouTube videos, so about once a month. Uh, I did five live streams and I used to love live streaming like back in 2018 to 2019 I used to stream two to three times a week and loved it uh, Instagram post I only created 72 Instagram posts now you may think that that's quite a bit but Instagram's the easiest platform to create content for you can literally do a photo and do a caption and 72 is about six a month whereby in previous years going back prior to probably prior to COVID, I was doing about five posts a day on Instagram. It's a very different landscape now, Instagram. and Maybe that's part of it, but part of it is just obviously me as well, just not being motivated and not creating. And Twitter, well, the, that one actually surprised me. I actually did, I think it was 300, wait, 300, I haven't got my glasses on, 341 posts, which works out to be 28 a year. Honestly, Twitter's probably the one that I care the least about. It's the one that gives you probably the best exposure with connecting uh, with companies to do collaborations for, but I fairly, was fairly passive on it, so I was very shocked about that. Am I happy with those stats? Fuck no. Honestly, I, I feel I'm competent enough to do a lot better, and here's why I failed last year. A lot of this is going to come across as excuses, but it's important to know where I was and what I feel contributed towards my failures in order for me to move past them. So firstly, it was sickness. So in February of last year, Brisbane was inundated with floods and we were lucky our house, we got no flood damage inside. I did have to bail some water out from the side of the house just because there was so much water. But there was something that happened during that period that may have been the catalyst that as to why I got sick, I'm not sure. Correl uh, correlation does not equal causation, but uh, in February, my brother's home. Now, I got a call le uh, probably about 8 p.m. at night saying, can you come round because my house is about to go underwater. So my brother luckily lives two minutes down the road. I bought some large like pails to, to get water out. And literally the water level was a couple of, uh, probably a centimeter from getting into the home. So like with the water rising, which means his whole home would have been inundated. We spent a few hours just paling, dirty, disgusting, backed up water that was backing up from the storm water drains and everything like that, pushing that out of his property onto the road so it could basically get away. We managed to save it and we got a generator a few hours in, which obviously was great because I could not have kept on with that. But a few days later, I got sick and I got really sick. I like really bad flu symptoms where I would have to blow my nose every 30 seconds. Um, I had fevers, I was nauseous, headaches, 
the whole shebangs. It's pretty much flu-like symptoms. Now, normally I, you get over that in a week or two, but I was sick from February till October. I had cold symptoms. I was lethargic, muscle cramps and soreness, headaches, congestion. I had to continue to blow my nose every minute, every two minutes for 10 months just because I just that sickness never went. They tried antibiotics, they tried to find out like to treat it with medicine and it didn't work. It was not until I actually had an operation that it fixed it because for me being sick and that congested all the time, I got a scan and they found out that um, this side of my nose is pretty much blocked, like inexistent, not working bone spurs. And the left side was at a 45 degree angle, meaning that when I would um, try to put like uh, flush it out, it would just like go up and then come back down. So I had an operation to fix it. And they found out that on this side, there was above the bone spurs so that it wouldn't heal itself or clear itself out. I had a staph infection and a fungal infection. And that was what causing me to be unwell for that long. I feel fucking great now, excuse the swearing, but I feel absolutely fantastic. And I've got a new lease on life since that. And I didn't realize that I was actually probably unwell before that, but that just took it to the next level. So I actually feel better than I probably felt and I can't remember how long, probably ever, which is great. So that is over. There's no more excuses for that. But there are other things as well. This is probably the one, the most intriguing one is anxiety. I felt anxious about the act of creating which made me less likely to create which then made me anxious because i wasn't creating and i felt i should be it's a slippery cycle it's like that fat bastard um austin powers thing and that he says oh what is it i'm I unhappy because i unhappy. eat and i unhappy. eat because i'm unhappy that kind of spiral so I've never really been happy with my editing abilities and the thought of editing gives me well, gave me anxiety I'm not gonna let it go going forward so it's like past tense gave because I was constantly comparing myself to the other creators out there and if I comment or watch your content on YouTube it's because you are creating great content and I really love what you are creating so um, everyone who I've ever engaged with on YouTube or Instagram should be very proud of yourself because you is what I aspire to be but in order for me to do that I need to stop comparing what I create to what you create and that's something I'm gonna stop doing I am going to stop comparing myself to other people I'm gonna not let the anxiety of creating cripple me that I don't create so that brings me to my rules of engagement. What I feel I can do to change so I can create more content in 2023 and stop basically failing myself and the community. Firstly, I do want to say it's okay to feel anxious about things. It's anxiety is a part of life and a part of being an adult and even a child now, weirdly. Um, so. I'm not saying I'm not going to be anxious, that would be a lie, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have management things in place to stop me being so anxious and when I am anxious to hopefully deal with them. And the first thing to do that I feel is I'm not going to shoot for the stars. That goes back to what I was saying before about comparing myself to other content creators out there. Firstly, my production value will never be near as good as the people I aspire to be like. But as well as that, I need to accept that it's better to have consistent good content than one great video once a year or like periodically. I want to engage with people and in order to do that I need to create consistently. So maybe, no not maybe, I am going to stop putting so much pressure on myself to do so much b-roll to do so much content um, in a way that I'm trying to compete with other, not compete, compare with other people's what I should be doing. So creating consistent content that's maybe good, hopefully good, I hope it's good, I really do, instead of it uh, trying to shoot for it being great. Because either way, when I produce a video at the end, I am never, ever, 
ever happy with it. It doesn't matter if it's a great video or a good video, I'm never happy with it. And I just think that we are our, our own worst critics. So just stop that, put things out there. If people like them, they like them. If they don't, they don't. There's analytics to help you determine what is good content and what people like, and you can use that going forward. But I'm not gonna shoot from the stars. Next, and this is probably very important as far as dealing with the anxiety side of things, uh, as far as anxiety to create, and that's being organized. So there's two ways I'm gonna do that. I am gonna create content, no, so firstly I'm gonna have a content plan in place. That's like ideas uh, of what videos I can create. So if I'm having a block, I can have a look at a list of ideas that I've had and I can pick from that instead of me having to think about on the fly, which is basically what I've been doing up until now. And secondly, creating content that is replicatable. What I mean by that is uh, a lot of people do pickups videos. Now, I'm probably not gonna do a pickup video every month, but maybe every second month of, cause I get a very eclectic bunch of retro and modern games and not just your Mario's, not just your, your things, but things that like a lot of indie stuff that I think are really good and I think a lot of people should play. So doing videos like that and with individual videos themselves, like unboxing videos as an example, um, having a pre-production plan in place being like that I need 20 seconds introduction, I need 20 seconds to introduce the game on the company, I need this type of B-roll shots, I need the B-roll shots for this amount of time so that A, going into the video, I know what I need to create so I'm not editing the video and then going back, oh, I wish I got this shot, I needed this shot, and then potentially having to go back and reshoot or create extra content because that's time wasting. So having a plan in place to make sure and that that plan is replicatable. So if I do unboxing A, that same principle applies to unboxing video B so that I know I can use that same formula for the next unboxing that I do. I think that will work really, really well. Probably next is content that transcribes well to multiple platforms. And what I mean by that is, is it's not a good idea with social media to have all your eggs in one basket because it only takes one change with that platform where shit hits the fan. An example of that is, you know, people who created photo content and when Instagram introduced Reels and Instagram went from a photo sharing, passion sharing platform to more video related content platform where those people creating videos weren't getting the exposure because when social media platforms introduced a new type of content, they pushed that in the algorithm. So by basically being able to do content that transcribes well, an example, a reel and posting as a short on Instagram, you're ensuring that a, you're getting exposure on two different places where you can hopefully connect with like-minded people, people that you were not introduced to before. But B, if platform, if Instagram, if, you, if you're not passionate about Instagram anymore, you don't have to build a brand new following on a new platform because you've already started to cultivate that kind of, not following, but kind of community behind you and, integ uh, and integrated yourself into a community as well. So if I create a reel, posting it on shorts as well, but making sure that that content has value on shorts, not just posting on something that on shorts that has no value to that type of viewer because that is counterproductive. So taking that in aspect as well when you're creating is, is this content, this reel gonna transcribe well to this other medium and how can I make it transcribe well? You can also utilize a lot of your short, your long form content as well into short form content. Uh, an example of that is like Retro Rick has done a fantastic job of doing his longer videos, clipping them down into 20 second segments and sharing them on Facebook. And he's now got a huge following on Facebook. So the content's already been created and just being repurposed. Always keeping that in mind when you create, when I'm creating that long form content, that can I clip certain aspects of this where it has value to an audience for with a different type of um, different type of media, whether it be short form, whether it be post, whether it be poll or whatever. So always keeping that in mind when creating. 
Sorry guys, my back's starting to get sore, I'm getting old, but um, this is the last point, uh, I swear. Maybe, we'll see. But lastly, why I started social media to start with is Beck and I literally have no friends. We've we've traveled a lot, and but we've never had friends or settled well long enough where we can have like meaningful friendships. Even today, we probably only have like two friends in this in our city that we hang out with and they're they're busy a lot because they have lifestyles like us so we joined social media to make friends and to create connections and we've done that we have fantastic friend network on social media that we when we go down to melbourne we have people that we hang out with when people come up from other cities they hang out with us and that's why we got into social media to start with because we're very introverted people we don't go out we don't party so it was a great medium for us to make friends now during that time obviously as you get more followers or more subscribers it's very easy to lose track of why you started in the first place i'm not at that stage but i'm very wary of that i need to do more to create those connections and to be at attribute um an active participant within the communities that i'm striving to be a part of so i want to engage meaningfully always on other people's content i i i you'll see a lot of people post on instagram with fire 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 emoji on so many people's posts that's not meaningful engagement or oh, this is hot or whatever that is freaking useless and i hate seeing posts like that i understand some people don't have the time in order to do things like that so they want to contribute and that's the way that they're able to do it but if you're just doing it for the sake of hopefully giving yourself exposure then that's not a good reason to do it and i try to write the best of my ability on people's youtube videos and like instagram posts but I could always do better. I could be more meaningful with my engagement and that is something that I'm going to strive to do going forward as far as contributing to and a dialogue with content creators out there with their content to show that I actively care about them and what they're creating. And there is a group of friends that I have that are really awesome at commenting on our stuff and I need to do better for them. So that's one thing, but also hopefully collaborating with other YouTubers and content creators out there. So uh, last year, there were quite a few YouTubers who tagged us in videos to contribute as far as like what um, one of them was like top five games. And there are a couple of others that we actively managed to do. But towards the end, there are a couple of like uh, retro rivals tagged us in what was it? Games that we couldn't put down, I think. And that was at a hard time where I was really, really struggling. And I was like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I even shot content because I had an interesting take that I was going to do it from the the PAX, uh, the PAX Expi Expedition, uh, Expo in Australia last year where I actually got other content creators who are on Instagram and asked them that question to share on the video. But I never got around to doing it. And I feel I've let them down and I feel I've let the community down by not contributing to those type of things. So anytime somebody tags something in us going forward, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna contribute. And yes, I'm still gonna do that reply to that retro rivals um, games I couldn't put down. I'll probably shoot that this month. So because I really did want to do that video, but just crippled with anxiety. So I want to collaborate with more creators going forward to either whether it be live stream or um, things like that going forward. So that's another thing. That's fairly basic, but that's just to start. This is going to be this is just a once off video. This is just more about accountability for me so that by me publishing this video publicly i'm making myself accountable to myself and to you guys to ensure that things change going forward that i don't let the past dictate what i'm going to do going forward and that i actively make an active change to do better for myself and you guys i would love to know for those of you that create that struggle 
whether it be with anxiety or anything, what strategies you use to create consistent content? Because honestly, you're all making fan bloody tastic content. I would really like to know what mechanisms you use to create to to make sure that you are consistent because consistency is key. So hopefully this is the only video of this I'll ever do. And the next video we'll, we'll be putting out will obviously be back to kind of more along the lines of gaming things. This is a once off thing. Uh, thank you so much for those who have watched this video. Listen to me rant and rave and I honestly do appreciate everybody in the community and I want to do better for you guys as well as I want to do better for myself. So hopefully next time I'm saying happy gaming. It's content that is good and it's there's consistent. Thanks guys. Happy gaming.